Okay, so today I'm going to talk about one of my favorite tools in the shop and one of the creative tools that I use a lot, the bandsaw. Okay, so before I start talking about the bandsaw or my bandsaw that I use in my shop, I really want to thank all of those of you who have subscribed so far. Um, I'm at 4,100 subscribers, which is well beyond whatever I thought I would be at. Uh, I appreciate all of you who tune in and check out what I have to say. And, um, you know, if you like this video, please do give it a like. That helps it out in the uh, world of YouTube. And um, please do subscribe. Uh, I'd love to have you on board for all the videos that I do. And any comments. I really, really like the comments and hearing what you have to say. So. Today I'm going to talk about my bandsaw that I have. It's a 14 inch Laguna bandsaw. And uh, I purchased this about three, maybe three and a half years ago. And uh, I use it quite a bit and I use it a lot, especially when I'm working on the lathe or making um, different types of uh, boxes. And you can see like I have a video right up here of one that I made. So what spawned me to talk about this uh, in this video was that Wood Magazine had an article on deluxe 14 inch bandsaws and I have it here on my iPad here and uh, so I thought oh that's cool I want to see where my bandsaw rates and apparently because of COVID they couldn't get any Laguna bandsaws and uh, that's too bad because uh, I really like this and so I was reading through what all these did and I thought you know I should share my experience with some of the stuff that they talk about and my bandsaw. Now, first off, when I purchased the bandsaw, I, um, I purchased this light to go with it. It's a, a adjustable this way, and it also turns back and forth. Um, I found that this was not such a good purchase, and it wasn't cheap. I mean, I think it was like 100 or 150 bucks, uh, but uh, it wasn't a cheap thing. And uh, although the light is bright, it just doesn't come out far enough to get the light down to where you really need to see. So. Uh, this is this is a purchase that I wouldn't recommend and whenever it's down this way you can see how close it is to my head So I managed to always hit it for some reason and I also you can't see um, In this camera view, but I have the uh, mobile kit on that and that works really really well because All of my tools are on roller bases so that I can move them around and uh, as I get crowded with all of my cabinets going over there All my stuff seems to get crunched up in one corner of my my shop right now so I want to go through some of the stuff that they, uh, they did for the comparison. Now, uh, here they have how we chose the field and to be included in this test group, each bandsaw had to meet the following criteria and they, they had one and a quarter or larger. And this one here is one and three quarter. So it's definitely in that. At least 12 inches of resaw capability, which this one has. And it costs between 13 and 1850. Uh, which this one did at the time that I bought it. I think it's still the same. I'll, I'll try to flash the price down there, um, what it is. But um, the first thing they showed was the function of the blade guide right here. And uh, so they talked about the different styles that there are, and they have good, better, and best. And the best has three different ball bearings. So it has a ball bearing on each side and a ball bearing in the back. Now, this particular one has uh, these little plates these little um oh they're they're a stone type plate that allows the bandsaw to glide over them really freely and i find that this really does a good job of keeping this blade on track uh, so i think that uh, i don't know how this would rate with all of them but i think that it's at least better or best category in that and again i'm talking about my bandsaw i have no experience with all the other bandsaws that they had i think they had uh, Grizzly and a couple others, a Grizzly, Jet, Powermatic, uh, Rikon, and Chop Fox. And I, I have no experience. I do have experience with a Grizzly, an older Grizzly, and um, uh, a Shop Fox uh, from quite some time ago. So I'm sure, I'm sure it's different now. But um, so I can't compare those, but I can tell you what I think of this band. So, and when I did my research, um, it seemed that everybody that had this bandsaw just raved about it and people who had like a jet or a grizzly or other bandsaws had major issues or had not major issues I shouldn't say but some issues with them so uh, I do like this bandsaw I've been using it quite some time 
Uh, let me see a couple other things. They, they talk about a, a attachable light. Now you can get a different light that has sort of a flex neck and I'd recommend that you get that. That's, that's what you want on that. You don't want this one here. Uh, it's a bright light. It's a very good light, but I don't think it works so well here. I may, I may end up taking it off and put it on my lathe because I do have a Laguna lathe, which I really like too. So uh, both my products of Lagunas, I, I really like. So the other thing is it talks about the fence and this fence um, is adjustable and it has the flat fence and then you can loosen this, these two knobs up and put this so that it's a rip fence here. Uh, so it helps make resawing a little bit easier. Um, so this, this is a really nice fence. You see that it just sort of slides back and forth. The guide on the front is pretty good. Uh, it's, you know, it's, it's pretty accurate. So I got it adjusted and you can, it is adjustable so you can adjust it to the blade that you have. So that does, um, work well. Um, Easy tilt tables. The table is relatively easy to tilt. It has a couple levers on both sides. You adjust them, you bring them up. And whenever I tilt the table, I always use uh, this Wixley uh, uh, um, digital angle gauge and I put it on the table and then adjust it. And I also zero it out on the blade actually. The nice thing, it has magnets so it can attach to the blade and you can zero it out and then you can attach it on that. It's a perfect angle to the blade. So uh, that works really, really well. I'll just put that right there for right now. So it does tilt easy. Um, dust collection, I gotta tell you that this thing really does a great job at dust collecting. Uh, it has a chute on the, on the back side right here. Uh, and I'll open it up and show you on the inside. But on the inside, when the blade comes down, it goes through a very thin little opening there, which sort of blocks all the dust right there. The dust flies off into the chute and then has the blade or has the, um, um, bearing the big wheel down there rotates around there's a brush on there to clean off that wheel uh, to keep most of it and I find that whenever I open this down here or open this one up here there's very little dust there now while I'm talking about that it does have a window here that allows you to see the center of the blade or how the blade is centering when it's running which is good to know and it also has a window here which shows you the tension gauge and I gotta say the tension gauge is pretty accurate and it gives different tensions for whatever thickness blade you have. And I find that when I follow that there, it keeps these blades really sturdy, especially a three quarter inch blade. It does go from an eighth inch to three quarter inch width blades. So you can fit all the blades on there that uh, whatever size you need. Eighth inch, you'd make real fine cuts and not uh, sharp turns. And of course the three quarter inches for uh, ripping stock. So on this page here, uh, they talk about different uh, categories that they rate it at, whether they give it an A or B or C or, or whatever. And uh, the first one is observed power. Now, I can say that I've ripped through some pretty thick and, and rip sawed uh, some uh, 12 inch wood here, about 10 inch, I would say probably the max between 10 and 11 and uh, maple and it cuts really well. It doesn't seem to bog down. Uh, you can push it relatively comfortably and get a nice smooth cut through it. So that does work. Curve cut accuracy. When I have the thinner blade on it, um, and because this can adjust down, this is a pretty solid piece here that comes down. Once, once you lock it in, it's, it's very rigid, which is what you want. And it allows the piece, uh, as you're curving around, uh, makes it um, really follow the line easy. So it's very easy to make your uh, curve cuts or things like that accurately. So, so I would, I would rate that very high up, up and around the A. Absent of blade deflection. Uh, yes, th as I've talked about on all the stuff, when you have everything adjusted correctly, um, blade deflection is little, very little. And, um, so it's, it's very easy to follow a path or follow a line on in just about any wood. And I, I cut a lot of maple oak, um, harder woods, um, on this exotic woods and it, it just does really a good job. So ease of adjusting blade guides. Um, yes, all the blade guides are very easy. I think the hardest one is the one that's under the table, uh, but you can tilt the table up and make those adjustments. I've got it down pretty much to a, a, a quick science now. It's relatively easy. And especially the more you use it, the more you change the blades, the faster you get and the easier it is to adjust everything. And it's not really hard to go from a three quarter inch blade to an eighth inch blade and make all the adjustments. It, it, uh, it is relatively quick to do. Ease of tilting and locking the table, as I talked about before, that works very good. Rip fence effectiveness. This fence is really good. It locks down. Once you lock it down, it's nice and solid and it makes it easy to rip through 
and uh, then if you need uh, if you don't need it quite as high if you have like a really thin piece uh, you just loosen these two up and flip it around this way oops and now you got a nice low fence there so it uh, that works quite well miter gauge effectiveness it does have a miter gauge here it doesn't come with a miter gauge i use the one on my table saw uh, whenever i do need a miter gauge which is not that often uh, so that has a nice gauge it fits in there perfect and nice and tight dust collected effectiveness i already talked about that uh, all this stuff i'd rate very high i mean you know i'd give it an a obviously but again i don't have anything to compare it to so i could just tell you my experience with this I used to work for a magazine as an editor for a couple of magazines and I know that when you have advertisers it's really hard not to um, not to bring out the flaws in a product because um, that does affect advertising so in my case I don't have any advertisers so the stuff that I buy I buy with my money and I do it after research and work with it so I'm giving you as honest an answer as, as I can give you on, on my experience Body style, I'm not sure what that was, so I can't say. Blade speed, I don't know what that is, but hopefully I'll have that post. I'll look that up and maybe post that on the video there. Rated motor horsepower, again, I told you it was one and three quarter, and let me double check that. Yes, one and three quarter horsepower, 110 volt, so that makes it nice. Uh, with a maximum, oh, length of the blade, I think these are, I wanna say 110 blades, but again, I'll, I'll have that down there, I'll have the top of my head, but I'll give you the length of the blade down there. Again, it can go from uh, the eighth inch to three quarter inch blades. That's not a problem. Net maximum resaw height. Well, let's see what that is here. So let me just run that all the way up here. Because it shows here that it shows 13. Uh, and there, there, is a, there is a gauge on the side here. So let me see what that gets ends up being here. Okay, so we're at the maximum height. And we do have 13, yes. It looks like it would be just slightly, I would say if I was cutting through there, 12 and three quarters would be the maximum height that I would have because there's a little lip here uh, that might hit at 13. So um, I, would, I would probably, 12 and three quarters would be the maximum that I'd do. And never have this set way up here unless you're making uh, a rip through it if you're, if you're cutting through, resawing a large you know, a 12 inch piece of wood. You definitely want to bring this down. Never make a small cut down here with this much blade showing uh, at all. And the nice thing too is when you set this blade, like I said, this is a pretty solid um, piece here. And so it uh, it doesn't need to be readjusted. Sometimes if you have it down here and move it up here, you have to readjust these pieces here. Uh, the blade guides, you don't have to do that on this. This one works really well. Maximum cut left of blade. So the maximum cut that you can get through here, left of blade, would be 13 and three quarter inches, which um, matches just about all the other ones. As a matter of fact, it's a little higher than the other ones. There's a 13 and five eighths, 13 three eighths, 13 and three eighths. Uh, let me make sure that I'm, yeah, I would say 13 and three quarters is, is the maximum width that you can get through there. So it's a little, it's a little better than all the other ones that they've tested here. Um, the resaw height also, there's one that goes 14 and a half, 13 and a quarter, 13 and three sixteenths, and the rest are below it, which one, two, three, four, five of them. Uh, so, you know, uh, as far as the, the height here, it's not, it, it matches up with them, um, uh, most of them. Um, the blade type, it, it matches up with most of the, them, the length, it's right around the same length. Rated uh, motor, there's a couple two horsepowers, two, th one and three quarters, then uh, one and a quarter and one and a half. So it's right in the middle of the ballpark with all the other ones as far as horsepower goes. So let me see if there's anything else here that accessories, no um, optional accessories, overall dimensions, weight, pound. Okay, so then it comes into uh, weights, pounds, uh, table size, all of that stuff. This has a fairly good sized table. I do like the table. As a matter of fact, let me tell you what size this table is. It's a 21 and a half by 17. So um, that's, let's see, a table size. Let me find that again. Sorry about that. Width and depth table, 21. So it's right in the ballpark with all of these. All of these are pretty close to the same. There's 21 by 16, 21, 20 by 15, 15 by 15. That's a small table. Um, 
21 by 17, 20, uh, 22 by 16, 22 by 16. So it's right in the ballpark of, of the table size, uh, really good. And I can say that the change in the blade, no blade is easy to change on a bandsaw, uh, but this one is relatively simple. Uh, you remove this plate, remove this screw right here. Uh, these doors both open up relatively easy down there. You have a piece that you slide out. You have a bar back here that you bring down and that loosens it up enough to where you can pop that out. And this has a little flip here so that it's easy to get that blade out and it's magnetized to hold it to give you the blade protection. But uh, yeah, and then you can, you can adjust the tension right here. You know, if you need to let uh, a little bit less to get the blade off and uh, adjust it and you have a tension gauge right here so that it tells you whatever blade you have. So on a half inch blade, you just bring it to that tension. It doesn't tell you the pounds or anything, it just tells you what size blade and it brings it to that tension. So um, overall, I, I gotta tell you that I really, really like this bandsaw. Uh, I had a, an old Sears bandsaw, a Harbor Freight bandsaw. Uh, I've had a, a jet bandsaw in the past uh, at our shop and we had a Grizzly bandsaw at our shop. And then this is quite some time ago, so I'm sure the Grizzly ones are different now. Um, in comparison to all of them, uh, I really like this one. A 14 inch bandsaw is just a good size. I have not found anything I needed to be bigger. Uh, this doesn't have a, a break on it, but it does stop relatively quick. I do like, uh, it's a positive um, switch here and it's easy to hit off. It does have a safety device that pull out if you don't want kids to turn it on accidentally or you can have it unplugged like I do. It lights up when there's power so that you always know when it's plugged in. Um, trying to think of what else there is. It cleans up really easy. I mean uh, there's not much in the way of dust on it but uh, when you're done it's, it's real easy to, to vacuum up whatever dust is around there. It does have a plug in the back here which is for this for any additional light or anything you want to put on it. So you do have a power plug right here uh, to add anything to it. It does have a tension and a wheel adjuster here so that you can center the wheel whenever needed. But to be honest with you I worked this, I used this the first time I got it, it was pretty centered. I adjusted it a tiny bit, not much, and uh, to where I was satisfied with it going center. And then whenever I put my blades in the center and I start them, I need to, I, I can't even remember ever touching this one again because it does have a double lock on it, so it locks it. Uh, I don't remember ever touching it again. So um, yeah, I, I would recommend, you know, if you're looking for a bandsaw, you really can't go wrong with this Laguna. I, I really like this bandsaw. Um, I'm, of course, going to be able to use this till I'm, you know, long dead. And I think my kids will be able to use it for quite some time. It's a durable machine. It's a solid table. Everything is, is nice on it. I do like the, the wheel setup on it, too. It makes it easy to roll it around. Um, overall, you know, I'd give this an A+, plus at, you know, up there. I, it's... Again, I can't compare it to the other ones because I don't have them in the shop to compare them to. But I do know that uh, from my experience with this, I'm very happy with this purchase. And um, uh, so far, I've been very happy with all of the Laguna uh, equipment that I've purchased so far. So I hope that helps you out. Um, you know, if you're looking for a bandsaw, hopefully it helps you out. Uh, again, I really appreciate you sticking this long and watching the video out through the end. Please do give a subscribe and like if you like this. And let me know what, what bandsaw you have and how you like it, you know, and, and uh, what you think the good qualities are or the bad qualities of it. Uh, but, um, you know, a bandsaw is a fun thing to have. It makes quick work for quick uh, cuts uh, when you need to make small cuts and things like that instead of breaking out the table saw. Um, you can do very, get very creative with it. And uh, since I've had this and been able to use the one eighth inch blade, my scroll saw back there has not been used since I've owned this bandsaw. So I'll probably be getting rid of that scroll saw, I think, because I'm just not using it. So there's no reason to keep it. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you in the next one.